Would you guys ever think that this is a piece of chicken from Chick-fil-A? Carl's Jr. So the first item that we've got to work with is a vanilla frosty shake. And please allow me to show you the ingredients that we've got to work with. How is this gonna work out? <laughs> From Carl's Jr. we've got six cinnamon buns and this is going to be the ingredients that we're allowed to use to create a new dish. So immediately I had my brain thinking, I don't know if you guys are on TikTok, but right now there's this viral dish adding condensed milk or cream, I think it might be cream, just cinnamon buns and creating kind of like a cinnamon bun pudding. I don't even know if you call that a pudding. That is exactly what I'm thinking of doing. So by combining the cinnamon buns and the vanilla shake, I am going to create a baked cinnamon bun de leche creation. I'm gonna be hearing a lot from this video. I already know people will be offended, but if it works, this is gonna be delicious. So we're gonna keep the cinnamon buns to the side for now. So this is the vanilla uh, milkshake. Because it's kind of melted, I'm just gonna re-blend it. But I'm gonna try to blend mine just a little bit because it's kind of melting. Wait, is this a bad idea? Okay, I'm getting overly confident, I think. Okay, so this has become kind of like custardy now, and it's definitely well blended, so that is perfect. So in this baking pan, we're gonna add the cinnamon buns. I've got six cinnamon buns, so I'm gonna kind of try to put them really tight so that it looks homemade. Oh, these are kind of stale. Perfect for this. Let's see how many we can fit. We're basically remaking a puzzle. I think this is gonna be incredible. I just hope I have enough space for all six. Oh, this one's breaking. Wait, I just have a tiny little gap here for one more. But actually, the good news is it kind of looks homemade. Okay, this better be the skinniest cinnamon bun in the world. Wait, that actually worked. This is what ended up looking like. This honestly doesn't look like we just bought it from a fast food restaurant, but we did. Oh man, I hope I don't ruin six perfectly good cinnamon buns. I would be so mad. Using the vanilla milkshake from Carl's Jr., we are going to... I might be onto something. Do you see how creamy this is? It is so creamy. I need you guys to see this creaminess from up close. Look how whipped this is. Hopefully this is going to bake into a custardy, dulce de leche, tres leches, more like uno leches. Well, actually, I don't know what's in it. Probably quadruple leches. And that's it. I think I might have gotten carried away with the liquid. It might just be a giant pudding. It probably will. We'll see what happens. It, it looked good at some point. <laughs> I need this to work more than anything in my life. I'm guessing this will bake for quite a while for this to thicken up enough, but I will show you the result. You guys are not gonna believe this. This looks insane. How good does that look? It's like custard cinnamon buns. And the sound of this baking, it was like bubbly. It was like a, a potion brewing insert sound effect. It was beautiful. I think what happened is the sugar in the milkshake like caramelized all around and it kind of became truly like custard. It was exactly like what we thought it would happen to it. No, cause cutting into this will be the highlight of my life. I don't even know which one, they all look so beautiful. Beautiful. I have to show you this. I do not care if I'm gonna burn myself here. Gotta make sure we cut it and separate it because otherwise it sticks really bad. I'm gonna go for the middle one because it's the doughiest one. Just look at this. Oh, all that creamy custard in the bottom. That is the most insane cinnamon roll ever. I think we've just come up with something incredible, amazing, life-changing. This is like the most insane dish using fast food items. I'm about to change everyone's Thanksgiving and Christmas. Cause if you show up to your family's house pretending that this is homemade, they will believe you. And in reality, you just went to Carl's Jr. drive-thru and you baked it for 15 minutes. <laughs> like the texture on it, it's truly unmatched. It is literally like the perfect cinnamon bun. These went from standard, you can buy them anywhere, to literally like out of a five star restaurant. Let's try it. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Oh my god, people will die for this. That is the coziest dish you will ever try. This is the best dessert I've ever had. Made with fast food ingredients. I literally, I wasn't expecting this from this idea and not from this video. This is literally insane. You see that custard in the bottom? I'm about to... Look at the texture of that. That was a vanilla ice cream milkshake. I'm about to change people's lives. Cinnabon is about to go out of business and it's my fault. There is literally a bite for everyone. A more custardy one, a crispier one in the sides. Listen to this. It's still crispy and soggy. It's literally perfect. And some bits that have like this brown custard, it kind of tastes like dulce de leche. This is the most insane dessert you will ever try, period. Don't even start the discussion. It is factual. So Chick-fil-A is notorious for a couple things. They don't have a lot of options. The menu is pretty simple and very like, here's chicken, here's bread. At most you get a bit of lettuce and tomato and a few sauces. That is their whole menu. So there's not much to work with here. We've got some fried chicken. These are 12 chicken nuggets. And the only thing left we've got is sauces. That's all we've got to work with. I also got these tomato crispy bell peppers. I think this is a salad topper from Chick-fil-A, which is going to be the crunchy element of my dish. Using the sweet and spicy sriracha sauce, which according to the label, the main ingredient is sugar. I was thinking of transforming the Chick-fil-A nuggets into a sticky, almost Korean fried chicken inspired dish with loads of sauce, very much not something that Chick-fil-A does. So I hope we have enough sauce for this. I hope this works out. We're going to recook this in a sauce that we hope it's gonna be sticky. So here's the Chick-fil-A nuggets. That we bought we have these are supposed to be 12 one two three four. they didn't scam me for once so we're going to basically recook these but i want something sticky and like more like a restaurant not so much fast food dish because we want this to be like a thick sauce i'm only using the sweet sauces so nothing that is like creamy we might use it as like a topper but for now we're only using the ones with sugar in it so i don't have much i've got two of those this is the sweet spicy sriracha and then they also sent me this Texas peat hot sauce. So I'm gonna use two of those because I do want this to be even spicier than sriracha. Oh, this is gonna be so good, I already know. I love spicy food. Something happened in me within the last months where my tolerance for spicy food is non-existent. I think I'm truly unbeatable. Like the video if you think I should do the, the hot wings challenge, that would be a lot of fun. I'm doing two Texas peat. The sauce is kind of bubbling up already. Is it burning? Cause I don't have any water. So I'm just gonna add the chicken already. <laughs> Wait, cause we might be onto something. Cause this is thickening up really quick. I wish there was a little bit more sauce. This doesn't even look like Chick-fil-A anymore. I kind of want to show you guys. Do you see how... I guess you don't see it now. Do you see how shiny... No, you don't. I tried. It is so shiny, this chicken. I cannot wait to show you. You guys are not gonna believe that this is Chick-fil-A. This has become something else. Cause this is actually really easy. It literally takes like one minute. Anyone could do this if this works out. Oh my God, this looks so good. This looks literally perfect. We're done. Would you guys ever think that this is a piece of chicken from Chick-fil-A? It's so sticky. I can't even get it out. It looks like from a completely different restaurant. And all we've done was mix two sauces into the chicken nuggets. So I'm gonna get all the chicken out. So good, the way it sticks together, it is literally perfect. It might be spicy, I'm not gonna lie. There's a four types of hot sauce in here. It kinda looks like flaming hot chicken nuggets. And as I say that, I just looked at my t-shirt. <laughs> this might be my favorite one, but we'll soon find out once we get a taste of it. It was such a simple change. All we did was add one sauce to it and we cooked it for literally a few minutes until it got toasty, but it's so effective. Wow, mind blown. Now for the presentation, cause I kind of wanted this to be like Korean, kind of like Japanese inspired. I'm thinking of the presentation of takoyaki, how they do the mayo in like a little squiggle. I'm gonna use the Chick-fil-A sauce for that. Well, life hack. I just made a tiny little hole on the Chick-fil-A sauce. Let me see if this works first. Wait, that kind of works. It looks fine. It looks good from this side. Imagine this is the side. My inspiration was like 
those little octopus balls from Japan. And then, obviously, because we want some crunch on it, and normally we do like chopped up chives or something like that, but we don't have that kind of stuff, but we do have the Chick-fil-A salad toppers. So this is crispy bell peppers, and I'm gonna do this on top. This is what will take it to a completely different dish. The texture of it will be completely different. Spicy, sticky, and with these crunchy little bits on top. This is my ideal fried chicken dish that Chick-fil-A doesn't actually make. With all the hot sauce, the crispy peppers, the Chick-fil-A sauce drizzled on top. Did you hear that? Listen to this. This is literally my favorite fried chicken dish. Officially, this is so so good. Chick fil A doesn't even, they don't even have the vernacular to produce this. It is literally insane. It's straight out of something you get out of, I don't know, like Koreatown or something. Like, just it doesn't taste like fast food. That's what I'm trying to say. It tastes like from the best, like, local fried chicken restaurant. This is insane. It's my favorite dish from Chick fil A ever. I would have probably added one or two more of the Texas peat hot sauce. Peat didn't really come through as much as I thought. That's also what Kim Kardashian probably said last night. This is insane. You have to try this. The ingredients that we will be able to use in order to recreate a brand new dish are ketchup. This is gonna be terrible. Not one, not two, but four double quarter pounders. We're going to separate the onions first. So this will be, I don't even know what we're gonna use this for, but we'll use this for something. And then for the burger, I mean, this is falling apart. So I am just going to transform this into minced meat because this is fully broken. It's got cheese stuck to it. So it's gonna be a McDonald's lasagna. <laughs> First name Liz, last name Anya. Liz, Anya, a pleasure to meet you. So maybe we can blend this into a dough? I wanted to use the cheese separately, but look, I can't get just the cheese out. I guess the cheese is just gonna go together with the meat. This is me attempting to save the cheese. That's how much cheese we can save from this. This is basically gonna be the dough for our burgers. <laughs> can we blend the McDonald's bread? into a pasta dough. Like, it's basically the same ingredients, right? So this is breadcrumbs now. We might be able to pull this off, you know? I'm starting to believe. So suddenly I don't believe anymore. <laughs> I don't know if I'm crazy, but I think it's becoming doughy. Can't even be mad. I knew I was gonna pay for my sins, just not this quick. Anyways. Oh, that smells like McDonald's toilets. I'm so confused. It kind of did become a dough. For now, we're going to transform the meat into a meat sauce. We're gonna start by cooking the onions a little bit. I was thinking of making an empanada because I feel like we haven't terrorized enough continents in the world. So I'm thinking of terrorizing South America next. So transforming a Big Mac into an empanada seems like it's in the bingo cards for today. This is like the Ratatouille sequel nobody asked for. Okay, so these are actually frying really nicely, as you can see. Weirdly, it works. The cheese was just enough fat that this doesn't stick. They're getting brown. Let's move on to the next horrifying step. We are going to deglaze the onions with ketchup. <laughs> so using the McDonald's ketchup, we're going to deglaze the pan. And I, ooh. <laughs> That was not the, the most hurt I've been by this dish. And to this, I guess we're gonna add some meat. Oh. I am as horrified as everyone else watching this. Maybe a little bit of water. Wait, that does not smell like McDonald's. Okay, this is actually looking, I mean, not terrible. Why does this actually look Good. It smells like good quality food. I wouldn't lie to you guys. I have no reason to lie. I'm aware this whole video is cursed. That smells good. So here's the dough that we prepared earlier. This is all the McDonald's buns. <laughs> We're basically gonna work out this dough into... We're just gonna work out this dough into something. So it cracks a little bit on the sides, but... I think it'll be fine if we keep believing in it. Worst case scenario, I get abs. 
because this is a workout. I think this would be just about as thick as I'm gonna be able to go without breaking this. It's more like a tortilla. I should have made a taco. Okay, so maybe if I go kind of like this. Wait, because we might actually, this might be working. We transformed the McDonald's bun into empanada dough or basically another bun so that's great we went 360 ended up exactly where we started so we're gonna scoop some of the meat so i'm gonna fill up our empanada with the onions and then i'm gonna close our empanada no it's breaking wait so this is kind of what our empanada looks like it is bursting a little bit but i feel like with a little bit of patience we're gonna get there maybe a fork as well Patience and a fork. The ketchup juices are leaking out of the empanada. Sentences that nobody has ever said. By the way, I just want to say that I've never made empanadas in my life. So that is a Big Mac transformed into a beef empanada. This one actually looks like a legit empanada. This is a quarter pounder from McDonald's. <laughs> the first ones were a little bit bad. They're kind of broken, but it'll be fine. We have a good one. I'm gonna do one more. I think the trick is actually to go a little bit thinner, not me learning how to make empanadas in real time. The trick is to kind of like press the sides a little bit. So I also realized I need to use a little bit less meat in it. Kind of want to go like this. Wait, this one. Ugh, not me ruining the one I'm showing it to you. I'm using the fork, I'm just going to close the sides. And there you go, that is pretty good for... <laughs> considering what this is made of. This is insane. This whole video is going to be insane. Do not ask me how long these are supposed to bake. I have no idea. I'm just gonna bake them and look at it and see what happens. As expected, the one on top, you know, it's kind of open. These ended up looking perfect. That just looks like an empanada. And this is still hot, by the way. It kind of burned a little bit in the back, but I actually think that makes it kind of look more appetizing. But this is a McDonald's empanada. <laughs> Should we cut into this one? I am so interested to see the texture of this. It's kind of like tough. And when we break into it... Why does it look so good? Why does it look so legit? I refuse to believe this is made with only McDonald's ingredients. It actually seems like a legit dish. Let's give it a try. I'm scared. I almost tasted McDonald's for a second, but then it's just gone. The best part is that it's kind of crispy once you bite into it, which makes this really satisfying. Listen to it. Father, please forgive me for my sins. And upstairs neighbor, please forgive me for the noise at 3 a.m. It just tastes like its own dish. I'm so confused by this. I actually think this is the best looking one. I cannot believe I'm not saving it for the thumbnail. I mean, we've done that. Wait, is it just me or is the pastry kind of flaky? Do you guys see how it's kind of flaky? You know that most wanted FBI list? I'm going straight for number one after this. This time around, we're working with ingredients from Wendy's. Okay, so first of all, we've got six little containers of butter. Then inside these little bags, we've got cheesy potatoes. So it's a cheesy baked potato from Wendy's, which by the way, is my favorite thing that Wendy's does. So we've got a few of these. That's more than I ordered, I think. Thank you. Here we've got some crackers, four portions of chili, which is my second favorite ingredient from Wendy's. <sighs> I love these ingredients. I need to transform it into something different. With the butter, make a creamy mashed potato, then layer the inside with the chili, and then cover with some more mashed potatoes. So I hope we have some more potatoes because this is, it's actually not enough for two layers. The first thing I'm gonna do is basically scoop up the cheese from the cheesy potatoes because I actually wanna use this. I mean, it's fine if some of it is left, but I wanna use this to top my shepherd's pie when it goes in the oven. So that was actually surprisingly easy to remove. I feel like Meredith Grey performing surgery on a baked potato, which is also what my doctor said when I got my appendix removed. So all the cheese out from these potatoes. I'm gonna use the skin. I think it will be fine, right? I don't know, actually, maybe not. Maybe I'm gonna remove the skin. I can't remove the skin. You know what, I'm just gonna blend the whole thing. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's gonna be brown mashed potatoes. It'll be delicious. You'll be crying for more. You'll be asking for this every Thanksgiving. Never wanted a bite of anything more in my life. 
You just had to be done. I just want to show you that this is actual butter from Wendy's. So you know that I'm not cheating. I am following the challenge to the T. Why does this butter seem expired? <laughs> I got people in Idaho crying somewhere. It's giving potato salad instead of mashed potatoes, and it might be because of many of my artistic choices. So let's try it with this. Oh, that is not even work. This is the most useless gadget I've ever owned. I just, I can never make this work. I don't even understand what the purpose of this is. Doctor, Mr. Potato Head is flatlining. We need to hit with CPR. Desperate times call for desperate measures. The problem with the baked potato is that it's not very well cooked, so it's not working the way I thought it would. I thought it was gonna be creamy. I just don't know how to blend this better. It doesn't work with any utensil that we've tried it with. We try it with the utensil that God gave me. Not that one. <laughs> That was funny. So this is kind of the texture that we got to, which I guess is not good enough for a shepherd's pie. I'm giving up. <laughs> I'm like, we tried it, it was cute, but it's time to move on. Me when I create a Twitch account. The good news is it sticks together pretty damn well. It sticks together well. Call me Gordon Ramsay, because at this point, I just want to assemble my shepherd's pie. In the bottom, we're going to start with a layer of mashed potatoes. Yes mashed potatoes. It ended up being actually fine. This will be about the right amount for the whole pie. Some people might be horrified at the potato skin in it, but I actually, I think that's just some extra vitamins, which is also what I'm gonna tell my kids when they can spot the sleeping medication in their food. I know it's grainy and strangely cheesy and buttery, but it does work as a pie bottom. Oh, nothing to see here. I'm gonna try to get the beans and the meat more than the actual sauce. I don't know what they put in it, but they need to put more of it. I'm trying to only use one pot so I can eat the other three. The goal was to create completely new dishes. They look entirely different. This looks entirely different. Maybe I'm gonna use my hand for this. I'm gonna start by sprinkling bits of potato here and there. You know what, this is not working. So I'm making a little disc. This might be genius. And I'm placing it. I'm building like a puzzle. <gasps> Ooh, it's kind of coming through. The bottom layer was so nice and this one is the opposite entirely. I already know this is gonna cook into a giant mess and it's just gonna look like Black Plague foods. That's a great video idea. Note to self. This is it guys. This is as good as I'm gonna be able to get it without messing up the middle layer. And no, I'm not forgetting about the horrifying cheese that we collected in the beginning. I'm gonna try to sprinkle. Listen, when this is baked, it will look fine, I promise you. So I'm gonna try to sprinkle the cheese Oh, it's got pieces of potato and nacho cheese sauce. I just know this is gonna look incredible though. It looks so bad now that it just, it can only improve. Me to my reflection. I'm gonna try to show you, this is the final result. As you can see, we use the cheesy bits on top and then we've got just a layer of the potato on top of the chili. This is either gonna bake into something beautiful or it's just gonna bake into a bowl of soup. Bon appetit. I almost forgot I wanted to use the saltine crackers as a topping for crunchiness. I'm just gonna crunch them up inside the tiny little bag. I wasn't gonna be able to sleep if I didn't do this step, so we gotta do it. And we're gonna sprinkle that on top of the pie. So this is gonna add just some extra crunch, I guess. I don't even know what dish this is anymore, but it, it doesn't look too bad. Because maybe we did something here. <laughs> it looks like a fancy dish. I hope you can see that in 4K definition. Like if there's ever been a time to switch on the 4K, it smells like crispy cheese, beefy, potato -y. It smells incredible. What? <laughs> Listen to this. Fluffy and crispy, and I can't use a spoon with these gloves. <laughs> so we're going straight for it. In this corner, this crispy little corner. Oh, that smells so good. I think I was a little bit ambitious with my slice here. Oh, that is pretty damn good. I mean, it did fall apart a little bit, but the layers are there. It's like still a pretty damn good looking pie. Man, that looks really good actually. That is insane. It is also really hot. <laughs> Almost burned myself. The potato skin, 
kind of actually works. You can't even tell what it is. It just seems like there's more ingredients in there, like texturally. I don't understand how this is good. This is supposed to be the worst creations I've ever made on my channel. That's what I came here mentally prepared for. And I would honestly be lying to you if I didn't say this was a pretty damn delicious shepherd's pie. It does taste like, you know, chili. It's like fusion gastronomy. That's what this is. It is so, so good. I can't even pick which part's my favorite. Probably the actual crunchy bits on top are so, so good. The cheese melted perfectly with the crackers. Maybe we've done something. Next up, so this is from Wendy's and the ingredients we've got to work with is chocolate frosties. I think that's the name of these, which is like a milkshake. And these are six chocolate chip cookies. These look so good. A very interesting thing about Wendy's is they make Frosties, they make a few dessert, like bakery items, like cookies, but they don't actually make ice cream, I don't think. So my idea is combining the cookies and the Frosty, making a double chocolate chip cookie ice cream. This is gonna work, I don't know. We'd have to put it in the freezer and see if it works. Sometimes freezing something like this, it doesn't work with ice cream texture, so... I honestly don't know if this is gonna work or not. This is the consistency of the Frosty. It's very creamy, so I actually think this will work as ice cream. I think there's enough fat in it that it's not gonna freeze solid, that it's gonna freeze creamy. This doesn't make any sense, but you just have to trust me. To the Frosty, I'm gonna add the chocolate chip cookies, so I'm truly making like chocolate chip cookie bites like in between the ice cream, like for texture, so I'm doing two of them. I don't want to use all of them because that is my snack for later. And if this doesn't work out, I would be so mad. Okay, I'm gonna do three. And this will definitely make the mixture a lot thicker, which I think will work out for ice cream. I hope this becomes thicker as we mix it. Wait, we're having technical difficulties. Is something loose here? Other than my brain and my creativity. So this doesn't blend or whip up as much as I thought, but I think it might be fine. I think I'm just gonna spoon some of the ice cream out. I don't know why it's becoming more liquidy, I think. I'm not sure, actually. If this works, this would be the most textural ice cream ever. Like, it will be so many chunks. It's 50% cookie, 50% chocolate frosty. This would be incredible. I hope we can get at least a scoop, an ice cream scoop out of here. I would use the second one and make a bigger one, but then I'm scared it's not gonna freeze properly. So using one more cookie, I'm just gonna crunch it up on top, kind of like decoration. I'm not gonna use all of it. If it doesn't sink and it stays like that, it'd be pretty incredible because it does look like the best double chocolate chip cookie ice cream. I really wanna show it to you, but I know I'm gonna mess it up and it's literally the best presentation. Let's see what happens. So it's been a few hours and this is the moment of truth. Is it solid? It is definitely solid, I think. We can imagine if this fell. Wait, that did turn into ice cream, so mission accomplished. It looks great. It looks like ice cream that you'd buy at like an actual ice cream shop, like some Italian double chocolate chip ice cream. It kind of separated the creaminess on top and then the heaviness in the bottom. So I don't think this is going to scoop. I think it's just gonna be like solid ice, like rock. You know, regardless of the texture, we did transform a Wendy's Frosty and cookies into a new product. So applause, thank you, thank you. At least my rotten brain is serving us for something today. Please work, please work. Wait, that is surprisingly... Wait, <laughs> it's liquid in the bottom. That is really strange. Maybe it's just not done with being frozen yet. Is it possible that it was still freezing? I think so. Let's get one from the side. I'm not sure if this would ever work out, but I mean, maybe it's just a little bit softer. One of these scoops that looks better. <laughs> I don't really know how I feel about this, it feels flaky. Maybe it's too many chocolate chips in it. Wow. Wow. That is... I don't want to say bloody lovely. I've said it too many times. We need to retire some sentences. The texture of the actual ice cream, the chocolate part, the frosty, is not the best. 
just it is what it is. It's very icy, which is exactly what we thought it was gonna happen, but Combined with the cookie, when you get a lot of the cookie, and trust me, we put a lot of cookies in here. This is probably the most expensive chocolate chip cookie ice cream ever. I'm gonna treasure every bite of this. Combined with it, you kind of forget about the iciness and the flavor of it. The flavor of it. Oh, no good. The flavor. So that was the video that we had for today. It was a new idea. Look, ideas don't always pay off. Sometimes they charge us. This idea charged me every second of the way. My mental health, my wallet, everything in between. I still had a good time. It was one of those ideas that was on my list for too long and I was like, let's do it. I woke up this morning and I said, let's just do something stupid. Here's something stupid. I hope you like it. If you like something stupid, you know what to do. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Switch on my notifications. It's annoying that I have to mention it, but I do not want you guys to miss out on future episodes of series. I want you guys to always know when there's a video up, so that is why I mention it. I love you, and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.